John Batchelor, my colleagues, Bill Whalen of the Hoover Institution, Brett Aarons of Market Watch Joy. The third and final debate is concluded in Las Vegas. 20 days till the election. I'm reading the remade front page of the New York Times right now. Trump won't say if he will accept election results. Subhead asked if he would accept the results. Donald J. Trump answered, I will keep you in suspense. Sub subhead. The debate began cordially. However, Mr. Trump called Mrs. Clinton, uh, Mr. Mrs. Clinton called Mr. Trump a puppet of Russia. And Mr. Trump called Mrs. Clinton right at the end a nasty woman. Washington Post. Trump refuses to say whether he'll accept election results. Bill, I begin with you because the headlines are going in one direction. This remark by Donald J. Trump, I can't make sense of it. And I've talked to historian Sean Willens now at Princeton, who's a historian especially of the early republic. There is no instance of any presidential candidate ever doing this. And the question now is, did he understand that he was damaging our under uh, our, our constitution. Did he follow that, or is this some kind of game? Good evening to you, Bill. Uh, hi, John. This is Donald Trump being Donald Trump. And, you know, the problem with Trump tonight is the same problem you've seen in each of the uh, other two debates, and that it all falls under the guise of coulda, woulda, shoulda. Uh, he could have answered that question several different ways. He could have said, uh, I plan to accept the results because I plan to win. Uh, if you're asking me if uh, what will I do when I lose this election, I do not plan to lose this election, so I'm not going to comment on this. Or thirdly, probably the most clever thing he could have said was, well, I'll challenge you. I'll do what Al Gore did in 2000. I don't like the results. I will challenge it. It was good enough for Al Gore in Florida. It'll be good enough for me as well. But again, could have, would have, should have. He should have handled it very differently. In this regard, this adds up to a blown night for Trump and that he needed to change the narrative of this campaign. Yeah. He needed to get the focus off himself. Instead, what are we focusing on? We're now focusing on what he said in that debate. Yeah. Nothing to do with what he wants to do in the country. Nothing about him being an outsider. Just, again, a very, just not a good night for Trump. Brad, how did you hear this? Is this a blow to democracy or do we just shrug it off because it's, as Bill says, Trump being Trump? Well, I must be... Um, Perhaps I'm just much more cynical than everyone else. I was, um, uh, I didn't, it didn't sort of leap out to me as uh, an amazing comment because uh, it wasn't really, that was kind of what I expected uh, from Trump. He is a sore loser. Um, you know, I, I think that absent clear evidence of, of uh, or clear or strong signs of voter fraud that he can hang his hat on, I think, he, of course, he'll, uh, you know, if it's a clear electoral result, of course he'll accept it. Um, I thought he was just playing games. What I think is most important here, and I think Bill really put uh, hit the nail on the head, is that um, this is a blown chance for Trump. Trump is behind. He needed to come into this debate and change the narrative about the election. And what really struck me is that once again, for the third time, he was he looked undisciplined and he had not prepared. And you know, it's very interesting because as you go through life. You know, you learn that the only way you get better at something is to sit down after you do something and say, what did I do wrong? How do I get it better? Now, Trump did not prepare in the first debate, and it was really a disaster. Um, he didn't prepare for the second debate, and apparently he didn't prepare for the third and re- the third debate, which was his, his last chance. And you have to say, well, what is wrong with this person? Um, he, didn't, he didn't prepare. His, he, I thought he waffled. Uh, I thought he, he finished quite strongly, but actually I thought he waffled badly for over an hour. He didn't hit the the core uh, issues such as trade that are most important for him. And when he did hit them, he hit them in such a, the the phrase word salad, I kept tweeting this, you know, I couldn't make head or tail of what he was saying. We saw that we heard the same buzzwords over and again, but there was no structure to them. So, you know, it was very, very lazy. And then as Bill pointed out, there were a number of ways of responding to that question that um, would not have given up these uh, headlines. He's going to be on the defensive now when he needed to come out on the attack. Also, I think, and we are three men, but I will say that my wife, her ears perked up when he threw away that comment about such a nasty woman. Yes, Bill. It really, really, it really stood out. It was totally gratuitous. It was a stupid, undisciplined remark, and it was just the sort of thing that you know, if you think what you know, did you not? Did you not understand that this is this was the this, this is the sort of the title fight, and this you needed to bring your 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 best game to this? It was really lazy coming in, and I think 
the, the two things that have hurt him show just how lazy he was in prepping for this. Bill, you pointed to that remark at the end as gratuitous. Was that exhaustion on his part to, to let that go? I think that's him. Uh, that came at about the 88-minute mark of the debate, and I think that's him going 80, 88 minutes without throwing throwing a cheap shot at her, and uh, he just had to do it. But, you know, again, this is the problem. Brett's absolutely right. It's just not debate prep. If you watch her during this debate, what did you notice she was doing? Uh, constantly with her eyes down. Why were her eyes down all night long? Because she was writing down notes. She practiced yeah. five days. She prepped five days for this debate, so she just, her head was full of little talking points and points she wanted to make. This is how you play safe in the debate. So she's furiously scribbling down at her pad points she wants to make. So she, she's talking, she's looking at the camera, and she's looking down constantly, just rehearsing these things. I'm not sure if I trust, saw Trump write down anything all night long, and that's his debate style. But uh, So now here we are. He is down six to seven points. Uh, in the polls. But if you look inside the polls, the Fox News poll uh, yesterday, you see some just really sad signs about how his campaign has failed. Uh, in addition to uh, trailing in the popular vote, John, uh, here is the outsider in this election, the guy with no political uh, standing running against the consummate political insider. And voters asked who they trust more to bring change to the country. They trust her by three points over Trump. That's interesting. That's a disaster for Trump. Second problem, Trump leads her by six points on the economy. So you say, well, that's good. Well, no, you go back to 2012, and I looked at the same Fox poll at the same time in 2012. Romney led Obama on that question by nine points, so he's underperforming Romney on the economy. And then thirdly, foreign policy, which is not inconsiderate in this election. He trails her by 18 points, whereas Obama led by only eight over Romney. So this is a problem, John. This is a problem, guys. When you run a, a, a campaign that's really content-free, policy-free, people at the end of the day don't know what you stand for. That's just you're running on personality and you know, this is this is a problem now. He's behind the policy eight ball. He's behind the popular eight ball. He's now at three debates. He's had four and a half hours in front of tens of millions of Americans to state his case. And, you know, I'm sorry, but as far as I'm concerned, I think he's muffed his chance each and every time to really state his case and, and convince unwavering voters to come to him. Things could change very much. I think it may shrink one last time because these are two very unpopular people. But the, the narrative, the, the game changer he's looking for tonight, the, you know, the momentum he needs in the last three weeks of the campaign, if it's going to happen, it sure didn't happen tonight. Brett. A look at look at tonight from European point of view. You travel often in Europe, and Trump has yep. called himself Mr. Brexit. How did the Europeans hear this tonight? Well, I will say that the Europeans I've spoken to, many of whom were uh, Brexit-supporting uh, British conservatives, view Trump with just astonishment and horror. He is... He, he, is, uh, he is not a wine that travels. <laughs> he is not. It, you, ha, you have to be American to understand, to understand why he's the, even the nominee or even close to the nominee. So uh, I think, um, I don't think they'll be particularly surprised by uh, the comments that we're surprised about or we're talking about, such as not sure he's going to accept the election result. I think most people in, uh, that I know in Europe would say, well, what did you expect? Um, I think they're their focus is the, the real issue has been um, does he have a chance of winning? And I think, you know, I think as, as Bill said, I think he's, he's, he's thrown his third chance. Um, I really don't think he has anything uh, now. I mean, not only is there not any sort of time or obvious platform left for him to, to change things back, but I think if he, if he couldn't even be bothered to sit down and prep and practice for the third debate, um, there's no reason to let think me that let me press you that. on let me press you on Mrs. Clinton's remarks, Brett, uh, because yep. she is promising not only a um, third on term. Mrs. On, uh, but Hillary's remarks, uh, I'm not sure that she said anything. Um, she's going to that, tax the wealthy and the corporations. Is that a positive <laughs> uh, message to the to the American economy? Oh no no no! I, I mean I I um I agree with you that she left uh, a lot of hostages to fortune. Um, she's vulnerable. Obviously, a lot of people don't like her, and she is uh, vulnerable both on some of the policy things that she's offered. I mean, she does talk about taxing people over 250000 I thought on the issue of entitlements, it was very interesting that she was not able to articulate as clearly as her husband had um, just what she wanted to do about you know saving entitlements as opposed to uh, basically raising taxes to save entitlements. Right. Um, no, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't dispute that she left a lot of hostages to fortune and that there are, um, you know, obviously a lot of people who are critical and there are opportunities for Trump. Um, I think in terms of a horse race, in terms of what's likely to happen, um, I would say, I, I mean, I said months ago that I didn't think there's any point trying to call this race until the third debate. I think at this point it's pretty clear, barring an extraordinary uh, 
you know, bolt of lightning that uh, Hillary's going to win. I thought, by the way, it was very interesting watching CNN. Kellyanne Conway, who presumably is going to get a brilliant, uh, huge advance for her her book of memoirs after this uh, race is over, she ran away from Dana Bash on CNN. I mean, she she gave a couple of lines and then she, I mean, she almost was sprinting to get away. Um, She was so sort of uh, mortified by this uh, by this debate performance. Bill, uh, Miss Clinton tonight, did she give a prescription for her administration that will change the direction of the economy? Did you hear any fresh ideas, Bill? No, I heard just a lot of empty calories from her in terms of yeah. in terms of yeah. sparking job growth, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know trying to you know trying to solve entitlements. Just no real solid answers uh, at any point, and that's a, that's a problem. Hillary Clinton in this debate was like the person in college, John. I hope you weren't this person who's three credits shy of their degree, so they'd take one last course and what they do, they take it pass fail. So, <laughs> so her so her approach to this debate was just to do as little as she could so she wouldn't flunk to get a to get a sixty one yep. a deep to get a D minus. That's what she yep. did tonight. Uh, by the way, for Kellyanne uh, doing that memoirs, if I've, I've seen the Trump NDA, I'm not sure what she's going to be able to write without getting sued. I want to read the headlines now, gentlemen. They're coming in as we're talking. <laughs> USA Today, keep you in suspense. Trump won't commit to accepting vote results. New York yeah. Times, Trump won't say if he will accept election results. Wall Street Journal, Trump won't commit to accepting vote if he loses. And the Washington Post, Trump refuses to say whether he'll accept election results. Uh, Brett, they're remaking the pages in Asia right now as I speak. I think we have... Right. One global headline writer right now, Brett. Yeah. This, yeah. this means a lot to us. We 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 take this very hard, Brett. Very hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah. look. I, there, there's there's the the implication of you know undermining democracy um, mm-hmm. uh, and a blow to the think... Constitution is what it is because sure. this is a major party here or yeah. used to be. But I, I think right. I mean I think very practically the fact that the that the headline coming out of the third debate is about that tells you pretty much everything right. you need okay. to know okay. about the state of the race. All right. So, gentlemen, you're, I, I, what I'm hearing from you is that with 20 days to go, there's not enough right now to change the direction of the polls. Is that correct, Bill? Not enough. I think, I think what you're hearing is that Donald Trump proved tonight that he does not have small hands because he did a very good job of stepping on a certain body part. In this correct. State. Okay. <laughs> and, Brett, not enough to change the direction. Is that a fair summary tonight? Oh, I think it's more than that. I think, if anything, he, he will have changed it negatively. Brett Ahrens of Market Watch, Bill Whalen of the Hoover Institution. I'm John Batch. I'm John Batchelor. The third debate, the final debate, concluded. Donald J. Trump, Hillary Clinton, 20 days till the election. Although the voting is going on right now, you understand that that perhaps up to 40% of the vote in the battlegrounds will be cast by Election Day. I welcome two of my colleagues from the part of the country that is determinative of the next president of the United States. This is Thaddeus McCotter from WJR. That's Michigan. That's Detroit, the great voice of the Great Lakes. And Gene Countryman from Wichita, Kansas, of the Gene Countryman Show. The state of Kansas is the Republican Party. So, gentlemen, I begin with the headlines that I've read several times now that look uniform as if there's a global headline writer. New York Times, Trump won't say if he will accept election results. Wall Street Journal, Trump won't commit to accepting vote if he loses. Washington Post, Trump refuses to say whether he'll accept election results. And USA Today, the national paper, keep you in suspense. Trump won't commit to accepting vote results. That is, I come to you. Is this a challenge to the Constitution? Is this a blow to our tradition in our democracy? Good evening to you, Thaddeus. Uh, Good evening to you, John, and to Gene. Well, this was the implied second step of his saying that the election was rigged in credit to Mr. Wallace for actually getting him to say it on the record. Now, the question is, the outcome of the election implies that everything is taken care of, everything's examined, all the votes are counted. Now, this would separate Mr. Trump's position from Mr. Gore, who was challenging the results prior to them being certified and confirmed because of the irregularities that he thought. 
Now, if that's as far as he's talking, is going the same route until there is certification and finality with the results, yes. If he's talking about after the certification and finality and the legitimacy of the election is affirmed and trying to do something, then he is way out of bounds and he has gone from putting off people who do not want to hear him talking about rigged elections. Gene, these last week... legitimate outcome is going to be a lethal blow to his campaign, and rightly so. You, Thaddeus, you mentioned rigged. He's been talking rigged for weeks now. Right. This is this is a logical, uh, logical extension of the accusation that the election is uh, fraudulent. Absolutely, and that's why earlier I said credit to Mr. Wallace for actually getting him to take that second step, which was logically implied in his statement about the elections being rigged. And now the, the corollary to that is by off-putting independents and other Americans by saying that their presidential elections are rigged, he's going to permanently alienate them by challenging the outcome of what will ultimately be a legally certified valid election. It's toxic. Gene, a very good evening to you. How did you hear this in Wichita? How have you heard the, the remarks about rigged these last weeks? And will the people of Kansas accept the results of the election? Good evening to you, Gene. Uh, good evening, John. Hi, Thaddeus. Um, but yeah, answer to your question is yes, I'm sure they will, uh, because we generally accept, you know, pretty much anything uh, that uh, has to do with the Constitution or has to do with uh, good government or has to do with just, uh, you know, um, getting the job done. Uh, I I, th- I thought it was interesting, and I know that that one line has stolen all the headlines and uh, all the people, little boys and girls in the media are running for their safe places now to try to figure out what uh, what's going to happen to the country when he doesn't accept the election results? He didn't actually flatly say he wouldn't accept it. Uh, he said he I think he said he'd have to wait and see. But I have to think back to the primary. I think maybe it was the first primary debate, and one of the moderators asked the I think it was sixteen or seventeen of them on the state on the stage uh, to hold up their hands uh, if they were going to support the eventual nominee. And I had the same feeling when everybody held up their hand except Donald Trump. And uh, he said, well, you know, he's going to wait and see how he, he was treated. I had that same feeling uh, tonight. Um, w- w- will it help him? I mean, when the major media is finished with it, it probably won't help him uh, any. But it certainly took the spotlight and the conversation off of the uh, old uh, tape that he made on the bus and the girls that are coming uh, forward and uh, put him back on th- on the front of burner. Is that good? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, gentlemen, we just have a couple minutes here. Did, uh, Thaddeus, did you hear anything tonight in the debate? And Mrs. Clinton had uh, some weak moments tonight, not exactly explaining how she's going to make the economy grow, which is the pocketbook issue. Did you hear anything on the stage tonight that changes the 538 seven points, changes the momentum, makes it move towards Trump in the next 20 days? Well, move toward Trump? Well, yes. If you're, if you're taking the approach uh, of some Americans that the economy is the number one issue, I would include myself among them, then all you hear out of Hillary Clinton is how her plan to make the government grow, right. not not the economy grow. Yet Mr. Trump is not, he gave, he did go into some specifics, but he's not, he's never sold uh, a message to the American people that he can grow this economy. He's never focused on it and expressed that. And, and I, for the life of me, I don't understand how a Republican nominee cannot stress the economy in what is, we've talked about, a rather stagnant, uh, morose economy. So you heard nothing tonight that in the next 20 days will change the poll direction of this election to Hillary Clinton. Is that correct, Thaddeus? No, but I, I never expected a, a debate to do that. I know. I'm hoping for a dramatic turn in the road <laughs> here. That's all. <laughs> You know, Sorry, some <laughs> some complete some complete 180 to go in another direction. Gene, did you hear anything tonight that gives a moment for those who have supported Trump and those who support the Republican candidate in these next 20 days? Any change at all from seven to five points? Anything like that, Gene? No, I think uh, Mr. Trump's um, uh, base is going to be with him um, um, regardless. And I uh, I think he had a pretty strong performance tonight, except for that one comment about accepting the election and that little... But he needs more than his base, Gene. He needs... Well, yes, I know yes. he does. And I, I, I'm i not sure that uh, that he did. Uh, but um, on the other side, of the Hillary, listening to Hillary is is like a movie you've seen before. Right. I mean, you've heard all of that For before. 30 years. We've heard it before for 30 yeah. years, yes. And you... But did she... 
the question here is, does the man behind catch up? And you heard nothing to catch up. Is that right, Gene? I don't think so. I don't think it dramatically uh, catch up. But then, you know, you have to say, and uh, ever since he came down that escalator and said he was going to run, he's never had a chance uh, to do uh, anything, and, and he, he keeps uh, he keeps winning. Right. So we, we got one more to go. 20 days to go. Gene Countryman of the Gene Countryman Show in Wichita, Kansas. Thaddeus McCotter, WJR, the great voice of the Great Lakes. I thank you both, gentlemen. I'm going to a report on Scaparelli, the ESA probe, It's on the surface of Mars right now. We're waiting data to know whether...